Jenny, who, do we, who do we have here with us today? Oh my gosh, we have an awesome, awesome man of God, um, Mr. Thurston White. Um, he went from inmate to inspiration, and he has a um, organization business called Heavily Motivated, um, where he inspires other inmates and in how to um, transition into the real world and not let it. Um, <clears throat> And not let your past hold on to you. Mm. Actually become a man or, or, or and um, live in the real world. This is your past. You don't have to live in that. So it's very inspirational on YouTube. They have great messages on YouTube. So we can't <coughs> wait to hear his um, story and talk with him. Good. And, and TV, who else do we have tonight? All right. We're back with Tougher Than Nails. And before um, commercial break, I asked Mr. Um, Thurston White about his um, personal experience um, while being an inmate. That journey. Okay. Well, it's funny because my ministry started in a weird place. My ministry started on a toilet stool. I used to sit up at night and, and read the Bible all night. And I sit up all the time while people was doing foolish stuff. I read the Bible. And one day my, my cellmate asked me a script. He asked me what something meant. And I explained it to him. And he was like, man, nobody ever explained it to me like that. Then he asked me another question. And I explained that to him. And then I went to, uh, I went to federal prison and I was... I was reading the Bible, but I was sort of like hanging out with people doing foolish stuff. And somebody came and told me that I have to choose which way I was going to go. Right. Whether I was going to be with the people reading the Bible and studying the word, or I was going to be with the foolishness. So I chose the word, and, and they respected me as long as I stayed in my lane. I, was, I always had my Bible, and people would, when they see me come over to the area I would read at every day and study and pray, they would go ahead and leave. They wouldn't come over. They, if they were gambling, they would go the other way, and they just gave me leeway to do what I had to do. And then one day, a brother came to me and he said, man, I got to talk to you. I need to talk to you a little later. And he had some aggression in his voice. So I was like, talk to me now, because I, I thought that he wanted to fight me or hurt me. So I was like, we don't have to wait till later. Talk to me now. So he's like, let's go in your cell. So I said, oh, Lord, here we go. Yeah. What did I do to this guy? So I went into the cell with him and he closed the door. And as soon as the door closed, the brother broke down crying, said his grandma just passed. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to pray. So that's when I started realizing that God had a mission for me, and I started revealing the word to these brothers and explaining to them how to pray and how to come to the Lord earnestly. And then I had to make sure that the best testimony I gave was the life that I led. And I was involved in the Spanish ministry, and it was like God blessed me because my incarceration wasn't hard. It was lonely because I didn't have the companionship of a female, and I wasn't around my children. But it wasn't hard. I was always, I've always had abundance, even mm -hmm. inside of prison. I, I, I had abundance, and I was in positions where I could help others. I helped Spanish people with the Spanish ministry. I was a translator for English to Spanish, and um, <clears throat> I even helped the institution. And I can't say anything bad because the institution in return helped me. I have letters from the heads of different departments inside of the prison where I left, and when I do apply for things, I submit those letters that they wrote me. And sometimes they call me and... and have me go back to the very prison that I was at to help the other help others and tell my story. But it doesn't help them, it helps me. It helps me remember that I don't want to go back there. And one day I saw a brother that was my bunkie. He was walking down the boulevard where I came back in to give some motivational speeches. And I saw him and he tried he put his head down and tried to walk past me. I said, hey Mark. And he looked up, I said, man, no matter what you did, man, keep your head up, man. Keep your head up. And he was like, man, Thurston, that's why I like you. You keep it real. And he came and gave me a hug. And I have to let him know we're not here to judge him. We're here to make sure that you got the tools you need to do better. And that's really what the focus got to do is empowering people to do better. And like I told you earlier, um, just God's been with me. And he's been guiding me and just showing me the way. Did I answer that good? Yes, you. that's awesome. Um, your change is beautiful and your testimony is even more beautiful. Yeah. Um, I can't hear okay. Okay. Why you can't hear That's mic too right there. You can't hear yourself? 